Hello, welcome to Blue Team Village. We are so happy to see you tune in. I'm excited and pumped to be part of BTV as this is my first time at BTV. Thanks for all the BTV team for making this happen and providing the feedback on the talk. That said, welcome to my talk. This talk is about hunting adversary schedule. Once an adversary gained a foothold, they typically would like to keep their access. This is called persistence and those who you speak mitre, it's called TA003. We will take a look at one such persistence technique or method uh, called schedule task. Schedule task is one of the most observed techniques across three different mitre tactics according to Mandy and Trends 2022 report. Please go check that out. It's a pretty interesting report that you can find. We will focus on this talk. Uh, we will focus mostly on this, on threat hunting for this talk and uh, how to perform it as well. Those scheduled tasks is one of the 385 sub techniques that mentioned in MITRE. You can follow the process discussed here for any of them. Before we move further, a little bit about myself. My name is Sai Molike and I go by Cyberhawk2. I'm an avid lover of death, that is detection engineering and threat hunting, not the actual one. Currently, I work as a SOC lead for a company called Sysef, recently acquired by Forescout. Apart from work, I love to travel, especially road trips. I volunteer for any security conferences and nonprofit organizations uh, focusing on cyber and its journey. So if you have anything, I'd love to be part of it. Last but not but not least, um, I'm a student of everything. So uh, if you want to teach me something, I'm all, all for it. Enough about me. Uh, let's see what we have on the schedule today. We'll go over what schedule task is and its basics. We will see quirks and features of threat hunting, process of data gathering and getting to know it. We'll see detection engineering, uh, not all portions of it, just the basics or how to proceed it with the threat hunting. Finally, we will recap everything together, what we learned together, right? Perfect. A very important note before we dive deep into the weeds is note taking. I know it sounds boring for some, but if you are anything like me, I don't remember what I did 15 minutes before, uh, you know, when I'm into a case or a of any kind of data. And sometimes you will have these crazy thoughts and ideas on how to progress on another investigation when you're doing an investigation uh, for something else. Uh, if you don't jog it down, you will lose it. Right. Finally, your notes should be your guide and for others who want to follow or reproduce your steps. So be sure to take notes while we are going at um, and I'll mention it whenever I whenever possible. Good. Let's get to it. Schedule task. This is the definition Microsoft gave to schedule task on one of its talks. It says schedule task is basically a code unit that runs logic in a background session at a specific time. Uh, basically, you know, you want to do something in the future or just one time, you can use schedule tasks to do it, but it's more than that. Schedule tasks help operating system programs to run at a defined time. It helps administrators to take action when a certain event happens. It helps update your antivirus software at a defined interval. You get the idea, right? We'll go over some of the main components that make schedule task schedule task. Uh, among them, the first one is triggers. So we will see these components of uh, in, in terms of what is necessary for us. If you are more interested in it, you can go ahead and uh, you know look at Microsoft Docs. They do a good job in documenting most of their pro uh, most of their products and services how they do it. So triggers. Triggers is one of the component of scheduled task which starts a scheduled task. It answers when a certain indicator or indicators are met. Like I want to um, schedule a task or start a task every day at 9 a.m. That's your trigger. Then actions. This is the main thing that uh, we as a threat hunter or your detection engineering folks or uh, forensics is interested in because it answers when or sorry, it answers what a task is actually doing. For example, a program will execute when the about trigger is met. That program is what? Principles, this answers who is allowed to run the task. The other components are uh, settings, which answers where the task uh, should look 
if there is any error, uh, there is a detailed documentation on uh, com these component. Uh, if you check the Microsoft doc, and then uh, we will have other two things called registration inf uh, registration information and uh, data uh, answers how to look for data related to schedule task like uh, there is a help information for schedule task or metadata info you can find all those things uh, in in these two components we will see how they will help us and uh, we will refer back if necessary so why are schedule tasks important right after successfully getting their foothold into their desired enterprise, do you think an adversary will uh, want to lose their access or afford to lose their access because they accidentally type control C in their uh, terminal? No, right? They want to keep access as long as possible or they want to keep their access to figure it out what to do with it or until they achieve their objectives. So, and it is also interesting uh, for, especially for scheduled tasks because it can be used in different stages of attacker lifecycle, like persistence, privilege escalation, and execution. Uh, but we, in this talk, we will only talk about persistence mechanisms. And um, who can create scheduled tasks? Uh, administrators or members in the administrators group can create scheduled tasks. And also, administrators can create uh, can give certain permissions uh, for users in order for them to view or perform actions on scheduled tasks. OK, that's all good. Finally, we came here, uh, we come to the topic we came here for, threat hunting. But let's see what it is. Threat hunting is a process of being proactive to unveil unknown knowns and unknown unknowns to better our security posture. The main keywords are process, because it is not set and done, but rather a continuous thing it is proactive as we are not working for something to happen, but taking charge before it happens. Unknown knowns and unknown unknowns are a topic on its own, but in a nutshell, there are things we don't know and we want to know. We are doing all these things to better our security posture. This is it's a process, but what is it? What is the process? This is the process we are talking about, or we are following in this. This is not the only one, but this is the one we are following today. First, we will create our hypothesis. Then we will find what data we need and what artifacts are related to our hypothesis. Then we need to know what we are working with, exactly familiarizing ourselves with the data. From it, we will create queries to search for the data we gathered and familiarized with. Finally, interpreting the results and documenting it all. You can follow this process with detection engineering too, uh, but uh, we will not go there yet. But this is the process that we can follow. But there's a lot to unveil here. Let's uh, break it down by each component. First thing is hypothesis. A possible or one of the definitions I found uh, pretty interesting is this. You can read the hypothesis, but uh, the main things are research interest, most important questions and decision because in order to be proactive we need to know what our interests are what questions we need to ask to create a structure to our hunt and lastly decision because we need to know what we will do with it after all this hunting and uh, whatever came out of it what we will do with it that's the decision process in thread hunting, uh, we will typically have broad hypothesis and narrow hypothesis. Uh, that's not a law or you know you can you need to follow, but it gives a, a, a kind of structure, uh, possible structure to your hunts. Broad hypothesis is just an overall statement which can serve us to start a whole lot of hunts. Like our broad hypothesis could be adversaries use persistence mechanisms to stay connected. As you see, it is broad and can lead to n number of things. You can use this broad hypothesis to schedule multiple hunts. The reason it's broad is it's just give you a glimpse of what you want, but not exactly how you can do it or you know what what uh, detailed what information, right? Then narrow hypothesis. For narrow hypothesis is specific, applicable, and actionable today. 
To form the narrow hypothesis, we will answer some questions from one of Plug's talk on Silver Sparrow in Shellcon 2021. If you didn't check that talk, please go ahead. It has awesome information, not only just the uh, Silver Sparrow, but the threat handling process itself. We will answer some of the questions from it, right? The first question is who? Who are we trying to hunt? What we want to hunt? And why we are doing all this? Where? answers what data we want to hunt for. When is the time frame uh, related to the hunts? Every hunt should have a time frame. So that's the where, when portion of it. And how is, how are we querying the data uh, in our SIM or analytical platform and how we want the platform to present the data to us. So let's fill them up. We want to hunt for adversaries. You can add insider threats to it if you are if you want to include that in your hunts. Um, we want to hunt for specifically scheduled tasks, and we would like to check this data uh, for endpoints because that's one of the data points you can check uh, for scheduled tasks. We are doing this to unveil persistence mechanisms achieved by scheduled tasks. And if you fill them all of them, we can find this. Here we are saying adversaries might create or change scheduled tasks on local or remote endpoints using GUI or command line tools to execute additional or new executables files for maintaining persistence in our environment. And we are doing for as long as the data exists in our analytical platform, and we are using some of the mechanisms like searching, grouping, and stacking. But as you see, this is very specific. We can hunt for this today, and our hypothesis will guide us through what we will search for in our analytical platform. Great. We have our broad and narrow hypothesis, but what we can do with it, where we will use it. I like this meme a lot because most of the threat hunting is about pre hunt preparation. If you remember our threat hunting process, this is our second step data gathering and what artifacts are related to what portion of it. If you are performing threat hunts, most of your time will be going at this portion of it because this will define what you can do in the next sections. So let's get that data. Here, when I you say data, it's data coming from our point products uh, or different mechanisms where you can gather or achieve the data, in this case, endpoint. For things we don't know, we will Google it. The first thing I Googled is MITRE scheduled task. Uh, MITRE is, you know, our dear friends where they have a beautiful website where they document most of the uh, techniques, sub techniques I spoke about before. So when I Googled this, the first link came out to be MITRE, uh, attack MITRE uh, enterprise techniques. And then uh, when, I, when you go there, check uh, at the detections portion of it, under it, we can find data related to scheduled tasks. So this is specific to techniques. So each technique will have the section. So when you go there, this is important to see our, how to interpret it is data source is what data you are collecting or you can search for. And detects is some of the artifacts they have observed uh, uh, using uh, first scheduled task, which was used in attacks in the past. So we will take a note of all this. So first data is command, file, process, schedule, job. Um, lack of data is also important to us. We will discuss that in the, in the coming uh, slides, but uh, please take a note of all these data sources. We will check from the bottom, the scheduled job, scheduled job creation in specific. In that, we will see some of the event IDs, uh, like specifically event ID 4698. Okay. So we will start with that event ID. Let's check that in Google again. Here I'm saying I want uh, scheduled task event IDs, but I want only from uh, Microsoft sites. That's the site notation. When I do it, the first link came from, from Microsoft documentation. And when I went in there, uh, you can search for scheduled uh, task in the left because it has all the events necessary. And we will see all these events that are produced by or when action is performed on scheduled task. Here you see 4698S. S is a security channel. Uh, so 
one thing is event IDs are specific or unique to a channel, but not unique overall. Okay, so let's take a note of all this, like 4698, 4699 and everything. Perfect. And we go back to MITRE again. In the same section, I see another one, Microsoft Windows Task Scheduler Operational. This one is related to a specific channel, which has all the information related to scheduled tasks. But if you read on it, it says enable the channel. That means in my mind, it says it's not enabled by default. Uh, so we will check what if it is enabled or not, but we will take a note of that particular channel too. The second thing we will see is the file modifications, specifically file creation events. In this, it says uh, it will be done in the system that you do tasks folder, uh, which whichever is not related to a software or path cycle or etc. So we will search for it. But unlike before, we will search for Sysmon data, right? Because why not? Because that is being rolled out in current en enterprises as a cheap version of EDR uh, yeah, sorts. But uh, we will search for Sysmon data. When I search for file creation Sysmon, I have seen that event ID 11 is related to it. You can see some description related to the event. And also from MITRE and some blogs, we see that they happen in tasks folder and under SVC host.exe process specifically. Okay, sure. We will take a note of it. Again, we go back to MITRE. We can see other things like command execution and process creations. For command executions, there are several types you can do it. Schedule uh, SES task, add.exe, PowerShell, WMI, and many more. So I will uh, take a note of that too, uh, because I want to search for this as this is one of the data points that I want to search for. In MITRE, there is an interesting section called procedure examples. This is interesting because here is where MITRE documents all the previous attacks that had happened uh, using scheduled task or where attacks uh, scheduled task is used in such uh, uh, attacks okay so we while searching for one of those blocks i have seen that there is a new data point that data point is registry keys so it says that registry keys are also important in searching for scheduled tasks, specifically registry events 12, 13, 14, according to Sysmon, and uh, uh, some of the registry like create key, delete key, and such. If you ever performed registry analysis and or checked the registry, it is messy and ugly. But it could be a lot of fun if you are into that sense. I'll show you why. Here. We will just check what we want. I know this is scary, but we will just check only the things that we want for the registry. So if you go to the registry path mentioned above, specifically till the tree portion of it, uh, you can see all the scheduled tasks that are there. These, some of the scheduled tasks are under Microsoft, which are operating system specific. And uh, the, the task which is highlighted here, a daily task is the name of the sample scheduled task that we created. In this, there are many four sub keys. The interesting words are ID and SD. ID is a gibberish GUID that is unique to our scheduled task. Here, ID is correlated with the daily task name of it. And SD is where our principal or security context under which scheduled task is created. SD is also important because it acts as a bond between what you can see versus what scheduled task is there. Um, and it's one, used in one of the uh, cases recently with Afnium. Uh, Microsoft has a great documentation on it. If you uh, are interested, please check that out. Uh, we will see that uh, case if we have some time. So, all right. But if you see all this, we don't see the things that we checked for the components right? Uh, the trigger, action, data components and stuff, we don't see it. For that to see, ID uh, will take a note of the GUID and paste it here. It's just the same path, but one above, uh, instead of trees, we are doing task and the GUID that we have. Here you see a lot of information and all the information which is familiar to us. We will not discuss the whole things, but the basic ones, uh, like actions, which is the thing which we should be interested in, what, uh, which answers what, like uh, the here it is running dnspy.exe from the downloads folder. 
Um, you can see author information, who created it. You can see date information, like what date uh, the scheduled task is created. Uh, you can see uh, the triggers, uh, the conditions when the scheduled task will be triggered. It's binary, you have to convert it. And dynamic info, if you are into forensics, some of the interesting timestamps are here. But we will not go to it, but this is the registry structure. I'll, uh, we will see how it is important to us or while you're searching for your data. All right, you better be taking all those notes where, which we spoke about. So this is what I have uh, for my notes. So it says I have Windows events, schedule, uh, task scheduler, operational channels, file creation events, registry keys, and command line arguments, all those things that we see. Perfect. That's a lot about scheduled task and how what artifacts, like I said, most of our time will be in getting those artifacts ready and seeing what artifacts are generated for a specific technique or a tactic. But enough said, let's see, let's put that into practice and see how it can uh, give us some information. All right, here. Let me set this one up. All right, here we are using Splunk as our SIM, uh, but you can use any, any SIM and you can convert the queries which we are using here using uh, sites like uncoder.io uh, and stuff, uh, but we will not be doing it. We will be using Splunk. Uh, and we will explain some of the queries that uh, whenever we are searching for it, right? So let's see it, zoom in. So the first thing we will do uh, in our threat hunting process in our in data gathering process is data sources. If you remember that we did with using MITRE. Uh, so here, I want to do the same. I want to get what data sources is available. Let me run it and see uh, what I have. Uh, before that, uh, here, uh, the, we, we want to answer the question where in our narrow hypothesis. Uh, that we said we want to search for all the data that is available to us. So that's why I changed the time to all time. Uh, I and scheduled tasks are, you know, time frame based. So you can, uh, sorry, threat hunting can be time, time frame based. So you can check for those, right? Uh, the query says that index, which is the Splunk way uh, of saying a data that we ingested from a point product or somewhere else. Then we will, with the help of Splunk command ddup, uh, which exactly it says deduplication, we get unique instances of uh, indexes. And finally, we are saying the uh, give us in a tabular form. Uh, so if you think back this to our uh, narrow hypothesis, this answer, the table answers how, like how I want to get the data uh, and uh, the index and the, hunt, uh, the, the time frame answers where the question. Okay, among these, the first one is Zeek, which is network-based logs. We didn't see anything according to our hypothesis, so we'll skip that. OS query, which is important, uh, it's, which is endpoint uh, uh, data, uh, but in our research, we didn't come across. We can maybe use it in the future, uh, or we can use it in, for this technique in a different way, but we will keep that in place. Uh, Sysmon, uh, which is the data source that we are uh, we searched for? Uh, if you remember this file creation events and uh, registry events, so we will use them. Uh, wind log events uh, is also important. We check that that's our first step actually uh, to check some of the Windows events using Microsoft site. So let's start with it, and we have other things like HTML and Velociraptor and stuff. Let's start with the wind log beats. So if I search for wind log beats, the first thing we, we should do is the second, uh, once the data gathering has happened, the third step in our thing is data familiarization. This is important because this is also one which narrates how we will search the data or what fields that we search for data. Uh, I just threw a term called fields. Let's see what it is. So if you see the left hand, the red column, they are uh, called fields and the green ones are uh, the values associated with that fields. Here, we have some basic information uh, about, uh, this is a sample log that we just picked out of, uh, you know, seeing all the Windows event logs. And in that, we see some host information. We see the agent information, like here, wind log beat, how we 
get the data from the endpoint. We used the win log beat in this version, in this um, uh, scenario. Uh, event dot code. This, if you remember, is equivalent to event it uh, that we are interested in. Uh, and event provider. Uh, like I said, event IDs are specific to a provider and they are or a channel. They are not specific. Uh, they are not unique. Uh, to the whole uh, Windows environment. So here it says the provider is Microsoft Windows time service. Think about it, how we can use this one. We have host information like IP and MAC addresses. We have OS specific information. We have a message field, which how it looks for, uh, how it, uh, how we, if we see this in the Windows event logs, this is how you see it. We have again, the uh, other information to it, user information also. All right, perfect. So according to our research, what we saw is we want specific event IDs. So let's search for them. So here I'm saying I want, instead of all indexes, I only want Windows event logs. And I'm using event.code, which you remember is event ID. And I'm searching for specific event IDs. But I did not see anything. I don't get anything. Why is that the case? So let's see. All right, let's see why. So here I'm using in operator. That means you can do, uh, uh, I want to search something, some data in a specific field. Here I want to search 4698 in event code and the rest of them. Instead of this, you can also use event.code is equal to 4698 um, or event.code equal to 4699. You can do this way too, but this is a concise way to uh, search for data. But we didn't find anything. Like I mentioned, lack of data, lack of return of results is also an interesting part in threat hunting. And we will see why it in our recap. Okay, let's take a note of that. We didn't find anything, right? Okay, let's search for other data in our little notes that we took. In other things, we saw that uh, we have another channel called Microsoft uh, Task Scheduler Operational Channel that we can check event data uh, logs related to. So let's check if it, if it is there uh, that we are collecting them. Because if you remember, MITRE said that if you enable it, right? So here, what I'm doing is I'm again saying that uh, I want uh, specifically logs from wind log events. And I'm using the operator event.provider that we checked in our example uh, before to getting familiarized with the data in there. I think it's, I believe it's uh, related to time provider. Uh, here I'm saying that I want any provider that has a name task in it. The asterisk here you see, they are uh, related to a, a wildcards so you can use them to find any keyword you want uh, and using the ddupe exact ddupe command i'm uh, wanting only unique instances of uh, event provider and i'm asking to give me in the tabular form and all this if you observe we are using all time so we are searching for all the data that is there perfect i see one hit which is better than the last one so what i will do is i'll take all this and just search for it so this one here, I'm specifically saying same Windows event logs, but I want only from this uh, event provider. Let's see how the data goes. Let's unveil, unroll all the things. Okay. Here you see similar information like agent information, event code. Uh, here it says event code is 719, but in event action, it says something like schedule task operational log was disabled. And if you also see the number of events that we see, we only have five, which doesn't seem right, right? So that means I cannot use any of the first two um, data points that uh, we have searched for, or we took note from MITRE and other things. Okay, not an issue. Let's go move forward with it. Let's see file creation events. Let's see what we have there. For file creation events, if you remember, we checked for Sysmon events. So let's see what Sysmon looks like. So for that, if you remember, we have different indices and in that Sysmon is one of them. We will check for Sysmon data. 
I'll just pause this to see what sample looks like. So I will do the same that we did for the Windows event logs. Let's unroll everything and see what data we have so that we can use, uh, we can see if we can use any of these fields in our search uh, creation. So let's see. Here I'm seeing most of the data that we seen in uh, Windows event logs, like the agent version, uh, event category, event action, event core. Um, but event category is uh, kind of interesting because event category says the bulk or the grouping uh, Sysmon does uh, for a specific event uh, action, like in this case, file. And event action is a specific to this particular category. Like category here is file and action is file created. In the same way, you might have actions for other things too, in other categories. Uh, the first, the next thing is event code, which is the uh, Sysmon event ID that we uh, gathered. Uh, provider is the same. And then file information, we have it because this is related to the file category and file creation events. We have file information associated with it, like file directory, name extension path uh, if you think about it this will come handy to us because we are checking for a specific path according to our research and host information we have it as we see before uh, we have what else we have we have this rule name this is interesting we have process information because what process creates that file we have rule name it specifically says technique id technique name which resembles to uh, miter techniques and their names uh, this uh, comes very handy too um, this is uh, coming from the sysmon config file uh, when you are uh, configuring your sysmon events uh, we will not go into details but from there you can get this okay good so as we are familiarized with our data set uh, we know what category, fields we need. We need the event category or event action field. We need the, because we are searching for file creation events, we need event code field. Uh, we need the file path because we are looking for a specific path. And also we can use the process information because we are looking also looking for a specific process. So that said, let's check uh, what we have here. So let me paste that. Okay. Mac. This is a Mac issue. Sorry. Uh, yeah, let me paste that. So here I'm saying that I want things from Sysmon only, and I want specific to event ID 11, which is equivalent to the file creation events, like we see before. Uh, I want process executable to be SVC host.exe, because if you think our notes, uh, we have seen that. Uh, this one exists from it. Uh, sorry, the file creation events happen from SVC host.exe and it happens in a specific folder or a path. And that's what we are mentioning here. Uh, and I'm using a thing called transaction. Uh, it's a way to group events together. And I'm asking Splunk to give me in tabular form. You get 75 results, but this is where the true threat hunting begins because one of your uh, if in our threat hunting process if you remember after querying is interpreting the results and filtering them interpreting results is uh, difficult it based on your known normal of the environment it based on the os behavior is based on um, the process behavior that we are checking so there are you know, different things that can influence how you interpret your results uh, while performing the threat hunt for this we will use a simple methodology i don't know where i heard this from uh, but i heard in one of the conferences or talks but it goes like commonly observed events across multiple endpoints could be common or something really bad is happening that means if you see something in different endpoints like this one office microsoft office office performance monitor you're seeing in most of the endpoints that we have, that means this might be common for a OS behavior or our environment, or something had already happened and we are in a doodle. But well, let's go with the first happy thought that it is common in the environment, right? By doing that, we are getting to this monstrous query
we'll get to this monstrous query. Let me run it and I'll, I'll tell you what we are doing here. We are doing the exact same thing. Sysmon, Event ID 11, SVC host, and task folder. But we are removing or filtering out certain things. That filtering happens because of OS behavior, like this one, create explorer shell and elevated task. This could happen because of software updates or uh, op softwares related to operating system, like in this case, Microsoft something, uh, or a specific uh, program that we have, like here, Google update. So let's say this filtering in our environment, CC Cleaner is not um, a, genuine process or not an allowed process you can find those things here too so it's a catch-22 threat hunting can be can help you in finding your no normal but also if you know your no normal then only you can find threat hunting uh, you can get most of your fear threat hunting so you know you can figure it out how you want to use it or uh, in threat hunting, but uh, most of the time, if you have a solid no normal, then it is easier for you to hunt for different things which are abnormal or anomaly in the in circumstances. Okay, hey, by filtering it, and by the way, a good task for you is uh, you can check for all these events and think of a ways why we filtered it. Because the reason we filtered it, like we mentioned, is operating system and stuff. But just uh, see what they do so that if you see this uh, any time in your hunts, you can say that, huh, I know what that is. And it's common. I can filter it out. Or uh, I can filter these out. And if I don't find anything, I can see for edge cases on might be an attacker using or a perpetrator using legitimate functions in order to do it, which happens in a lot of ways. So. Anyways, after filtering, we have one task happening on two endpoints. Interesting. This is not to say suspicious uh, yet, but it is interesting to see that we have a certain process that is running on uh, uh, two things. So let's search for what it is doing. So let's take this and do a blind search for that. Uh, uh, so we will we will do a blind search on what it is doing. In this, we are seeing uh, some of the things like registry value sets. This is interesting because we have seen that uh, registry events will be created when a scheduled task is created. Uh, we are seeing most of them are, yeah, most of them are related to registry. Uh, but easier way instead of going through each log, uh, easier way to find about what we have is this. Uh, let me put a query. So here I'm using the exact command, but transactions, I'm trying to uh, see what uh, hosts are there and grouping things by the host name. And I'm saying the event category field, which we saw for Sysmon uh, to see what exact actions or event category and event actions to see what exactly it is doing. So here we see file creation events, registry uh, events uh, on both the endpoints. This is interesting because we've seen the exact same things that we have checked in our artifacts whenever a scheduled task is created, this is what will happen. Okay, perfect. But anytime you see these interesting things, take a note of it and wait until it becomes uh, uh, suspicious. So here we are doing the exact same thing. So as we see, there are several ways to create com uh, command line arguments for scheduled task. I'm checking for some of the keywords that can happen while performing scheduled tasks. Like here, I'm checking uh, for uh, different things, but you can you can filter out all this. Let's see, just plain. So let's check this. Oh, I uh, okay. This, if I type properly, it will make sense. Okay. So here we are checking that I want the I want to check for a parent powershell.exe and a child cmd.exe uh, to see some of the key line arguments for uh, scheduled task creations. So this one, I, I found it in different ways. I can find it in different ways. One is you can see in Microsoft documentation, uh, like you can go to uh, Microsoft 
SCH tasks. Uh, in here, you can check uh, what are the commands that you can use using Microsoft, like change, create, and stuff. Uh, you can use PowerShell uh, documentation. Similarly, you can use WMI. These are basic keywords that you are using in order to find a, a particular uh, scheduled task or uh, what it is, what a scheduled task is doing, right? Perfect. Let's say it, with our uh, previous things, if we're using registry and file creations, we determined that particular scheduled task daily, Magnus task is uh, there, uh, is a suspicious one. And in order to check what it is doing, we saw that uh, process creation events. In that process creation events, we see a command line, uh, which matches our, uh, uh, the command that we are saying here, uh, C uh, slash C start. That means when command.exe is used to start uh, uh, cleanup.exe, and we don't know what cleanup.exe is, or we don't know anything about, but we just search for the keywords. And this is what we found in it. And we saw powershell.exe. And if you think about it, think of a bin general things like temp folder, cleanup.exe. It is using powershell.exe to spin up command.exe and starting something from a cleanup folder. Okay, let's see what cleanup folder is doing. Uh, sorry, cleanup.exe uh, is doing. So for that, we will do the basic thing. If I type it, so cleanup.exe, we have 113 events. Again, the best way to do what actions it is performing is uh, using the uh, specific command that we have checked, like dup. And here we are seeing different things, file created, process terminated, process accessed, blah, blah, blah. This is a good task. Now we have searched for the scheduled task which is needed. We found something which looks suspicious and uh, we have seen several things that we can do it. So take pick any of your things like network creation events or uh, uh, any network detected events, image loaded events. Uh, here we are checking for, so let's go back to the presentation. So uh, here I, we are just checking for one such events process creation. And uh, we have seen this particular thing that we have seen before uh, that something is starting from a temp folder. So think of it, cleanup.exe starting with cmd.exe using PowerShell from a temp folder on the host that we have checked a suspicious or an interesting scheduled task is present. This starts your hunt. Again, most of the time hunting is chasing that goose, but uh, with a solid data backing up. Like if one data says something is suspicious, back it up with another data, which produces similar artifacts. And that's it. But there is more than that to threat hunting. We only checked one such events. So you can go ahead and check what else is present in all the data or uh, all the artifacts that we gathered. All right, let's recap everything with a small template. We are using a template for that. Uh, the title of our hunt is hunting for adversary schedule. Uh, we created this on the date. We are notifying, noting our hypothesis. Uh, this is our uh, uh, this is our hypothesis in in uh, the narrow hypothesis that we got. Uh, we are mentioning some of the MITRE techniques and tactics. We are using simulation techniques. Like this is very important. If you are simulating something to in order to perform threat hunting or detections, this is interesting. You can note what simulation has performed. And then we're using a proposed search query. Here, this query could be anything. I just mentioned the last search query, but if you can mention all your search queries in it, it helps if someone wants to take this template and wants to reproduce the steps, it helps them a lot. And here I'm noting some of the limitations of my threat hunting. Like I mentioned, if something didn't turn up in threat hunting, it's also interesting. If you remember in our case, we haven't seen any logs related to Windows event logs and also task scheduler operational, which says it got disabled because there was no space or something. So this is important because this helps in getting that visibility of where, how and why I'm not getting this particular data. If I'm not getting, how can I get it? And we also observed when using this uh, our methodology for command.exe where, where we run through different artifacts, only we saw workstation one has 
cleanup.exe. But if you remember our scheduled task, it is running on two workstations. Why that's the case? These questions helps you answer a lot of other things, which direct doesn't always mean that you want to find this you know, grand APT that you're seeing. But these are also byproducts of your threat running. It helps you achieve that um, uh, on, to know unknown unknowns and unknown knowns uh, to help secure in your run. Good. And the last, what we did we find? We found a particular task called Daily Mag uh, Magnum Tempest IT Cleanup on a couple of computers. And a cleanup.exe is also launched uh, from a, you know, a strange location like temp and also has some interesting artifacts even related to uh, network artifacts. Perfect. Like I mentioned, uh, the detection coverage and visibility uh, here through our hands, we have mentioned, we have noted that event logs are not there, uh, or at least specific to scheduled tasks are not there. So we want to see a way we can get that data. Uh, we are, uh, by the looks of it, we have not enabled that uh, operational uh, channel. So we want to enable it so that we can get more data and weigh the benefits and risks of enabling it. We also seen that uh, workstation one only produced the cleanup.exe process creation. We didn't see the works other workstation uh, performing it. Uh, so that's our visibility. Coming to our detection coverage, like I said, you can stop your hunts uh, at the findings and documentation using the template that we have uh, uh, we, we did here, but we can also move it a little further. We can use uh, it for our detection coverage. Here, we are saying that uh, uh, we can use our query, whichever we used for the threat hunting uh, queries, like our uh, process creation events uh, from, our, uh, or uh, we can use our, um, uh, based on our no normal or filtering capabilities, we have seen, uh, we have filtered everything and only one event was left. We can use that as our detection query, you can use a combination of them, right? But that is only one portion of what Hunt we did. There are several other use cases in this schedule that's making unusual communications. Uh, it is downloading PowerShell cradles and several other things. You can either create hunts for each of each and every of these, or you can hunt for the behaviors like we, we can do, uh, let's say schedule task how it is uh, based on the artifacts that we gathered. So you can you can use either one of them, right? The, uh, these are all the uh, uh, detections that we can create uh, if we have gathered all the tasks and if we can do those information. And if you see here, hidden scheduled tasks, if you remember, uh, I, I said, if, if you have some time, we will talk about Hafnium. Uh, this is what it did, it hide hid its scheduled tasks from uh, viewing it. It does using that SD key that we spoke about in registry, where it automatically removed that uh, um, using com, I guess, uh, but it removed it. And uh, when, when you remove that, you don't have the connection between what you see versus what is what scheduled task is running. So you cannot, uh, it, it gives a, a nice behavior to evade uh, uh, the regular hunts that you have. So you can also uh, check for that particular behavior, something uh, like, let's say, SD registry sub key is deleted uh, using Syspawn or any other ETR that you have. So these queries that you use are specific to ETR uh, Splunk here, but you can convert them into and use it, like we said, to any others. Finally, that's our talk. Uh, all the references uh, I have followed is mentioned here. And thank you so much for everyone for being patiently watching this. Uh, we ran through some of the artifacts, uh, but uh, please go through those artifacts uh, one by one. You can find your own uh, rhythm in uh, find in uh, searching for those artifacts. We will be releasing a blog post which has detailed information on everything. So. Uh, please go ahead and check. Please join our Discord channel if possible. So thank you.